So we can log in, we've got the, you know, our Apache, PHP, MySQL all working. And we followed the step-by-step -step guide for, for Ubuntu, we followed these steps. Um, in this video, I want to set up unit tests, just because uh, that's going to really help us in our development uh, to be able to, you know, write tests and run them. So what you can do is go to this guide here for Moodle to set up PHP unit. And basically what, what we're going to need is a new database uh, and put those details into our config file. And we also need a new uh, uh, site data directory as well. So we have our code here in uh, this default directory, vada.html.moodle, that's the one that they told us to set it up in, in this step-by-step uh, -step guide here. So what we need to do first is we need to go into MySQL and create a new test database. So let's do that. MySQL dash u, and we can make it with the root root guy. Okay, so get into MySQL, show databases. So we've got the one that we use now for our current site that we've just set up, Moodle. So what we want to do is make a new one that's going to be used for tests. Create database. Uh, Moodle test. Okay, show databases again. There it is. All right, so that should be all we need to do for now. Let's get out of there. Now, and let's put these details into our config.php file. And you're going to need sudo to edit this config file. And so let's go down to, well, let's go up to the to the start, I guess, firstly. And just look, this is what we have now for our current database. Um, you know, the, the database name is Moodle and the user is Moodle. And we've got our password. There's a section down here, yeah, for PHP unit. So we might just use that section. And I'll go and put in some details here. So these are basically the details we'll need. Uh, you'll need to say it's MySQL. We need to say our new database name that we just created, Moodle test. We can use the same user and the same password, as long as that user has access to that database. So we also need to put in a prefix, um, you know, PHP unit, and we can have uh, a new data root, a new site data directory for PHP unit as well. So now let's write and quit that. We're going to have to create this uh, directory though, aren't we? We don't have that right now, so let's quit that. And let's go to var. We see our Moodle data directory that we created before. Let's make one that we want here, Moodle test data. That's what we want. And we're going to need sudo for that. And let's make it the same permissions as the other one. just to make sure that's not going to cause issues. So you see they're both they're both green now. So we see they, they have these all these permissions. Let's make sure this database user has access to this new database. So um, if we do go back into MySQL dash u let's use root now. What is it? So we go back in as the root user, and we want to grant access for the Moodle user to the Moodle test database. So we can do something like this grant access, and just make sure we run one of these um, permission granting commands. So something like that is what we want. Grant access, grant all privileges on Moodle test to Moodle at localhost. That's what we want to do, something like that. Okay, and now just to make sure, we can go MySQL-U Moodle 
log in as that user and um, choose the database Moodle test and supply a password. And now we can still get in there, see? Show tables, it's going to be empty. We just created that database. We haven't done anything with it yet. We haven't installed Moodle in there. Okay, great. So we, we know running this command lets us know that our Moodle user you know has access properly. That's great. So now the next step um, will be basically, let's go back into our code directory. And to run PHP unit, you basically just have to run this initializing PHP script. Um, I don't think we need to do that. I think we just have to do admin tool php unit cli init.php and it's sudo so let's see how it goes here continue yes and now it's off doing a composer install of php unit and now it's actually starting to do a Moodle install into that test database. So maybe while that's going, we can open up a new terminal and just have a look in there. So if we go into that test database without with a password, obviously. You just show tables now. Remember, before it was empty, but now you can see it's starting to get filled up with tables, and they all have our PHP unit prefix as well. So that's just telling us that everything seems to be working fine. You know, and, and as these plugins get installed, the, those tables will start to show up in here as well. I mean, we have 259 tables there, and now 363 because more tables have been created as Moodle installs itself can have tables again so it got up to a total of 428 um, and it's gone and done you know just set up the whole schema the way we need it um, now now that that's all complete you can run unit tests because you see how we've got this vendor folder here that's kind of what composer creates and it's got all this third party you know non Moodle code but if we go in there We've installed all of this, um, these libraries basically, that's what they are. And one of them is PHP unit. So basically the command you normally would do is you have or bin PHP unit, uh, and that, that's enough really. Then you can run the full test suite of all of Moodle. So you'll start to see the output. You can see you know all the PHP version, Moodle version, and then when you get these dots, that's like a past unit test. And if you would get another output, like an F, that would mean a fail. It's important to see exactly what PHP and Moodle version we're on because some tests will fail. Here we go, we got some errors already. E for error, S for skipped. Some tests will fail because they are, um, you just, they, you've, you're using a plugin, for example, that is not made for Moodle 3.9. So you are kind of got incompatibility there. Or maybe there's some PHP code that's written with the wrong syntax. Maybe you're using a version of a plugin written for PHP 8, but you're running PHP 7.4, and so that's going to fail. So we're running the test now. This is going to take a while just because it's running the full Moodle suite. The whole suite takes probably like an hour. So I can just cancel this, control C, get out of there. And there's another useful thing to check is the phpunit.xml file. So Moodle will create this file and I'll show you where it is. This one here. Once you've done that init.php step of PHP unit, uh, this file gets created. And if we have a look at it, we can see that it's basically just this big output of um, test suite data so what it's done is it's gone in here and it's basically created a new test suite 
for all these different parts of Moodle. And if you put new plugins in, then they'll get their own as well. And this just helps you uh, create the command to be able to, to run this particular test suite. So for example, let's run the core form test suite. So we'll copy that and you can just run vendor bin php unit and then give it a this argument and run it like that. And so that'll be more targeted towards just all those tests and only those. So you can see that that kind of finished. We didn't have to run the full test suite of Moodle, but just that one suite. There's some other more um, targeted commands we can run. Uh, there's more information here, basically. Uh, we can run, we can run just, just these tests. You can point to a file itself, or you can filter to just the actual test function name. So, if I, for example, show you. And we can get out of there. We can, I can show you some of the Moodle code. Um, there's unit tests all over the place. So, for example, enroll. Tests, yeah, there, there it would be. And then we can have a look at one of these tests. Enroll lib test. And if you go down here, you see test enroll get all users courses. So this is obviously this test. What it's going to do is, you know, get some records and do some assertions, call some functions, make some assertions, um, create some courses, and then. In the end, I guess, yeah, I mean, it would call the function that it says it's testing, enroll get all courses, and make some assertions on that. So what if we want to run this particular test on its own? Well, what, what we have to do is we kind of know, we know where it is, this enroll lib. So we want to run this particular test here, right? So we can literally just do and point to that file like this. And that'll run all tests in that file. We can also filter before we run the, that file as well. So if we just do filter and just put it in there, I'm going to put it in the middle there. I mean, once this finishes, I guess there's a lot of tests in here. There you go, 36 tests. So we can do that again and put a filter in there. Filter. Um, and now obviously I forgot what that test was actually called. That's the one we want to run. Filter. Like that. That's just going to run the one test. And that one's okay. So hopefully you've learned something here and you've got this set up as well um, in the next videos we'll probably go ahead and start writing some tests to help us just in development and for all the other reasons tests are great you know to give us more confidence and to make sure we're not making any breaking changes when we when we do change things um, it's very good to have this set up especially if for a developer but whenever you're going to be making new 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 code changes you want to have everything that you've already done tested so that you know none of your new changes are going to affect that